This is getting nervous. Hi guys! Welcome to Lazarski Talks. It's Monday, it's 6 p.m. and we're so thankful that you are here with us. Let us start we think that we have a new one, a new host here. He's not a guest today, but he is a new host that I am super happy to have here with me, an alumni of Lazarsky University and a wonderful friend of mine, Deepan Shulakman. Thank Hi, you very everybody. much for being here with me. Thank you for having me. Uh, I am sure we're going to have a great talk today. It's going to be probably a little bit longer than one hour, but believe us, it's worth it. So let me start with the technical stuff. Turn off your microphones. If you want to say something, you know you can always turn it on. But we know that you like to text us, so we're more than welcome. You're more than welcome to do this, and we're more than happy to read all of your questions that you're going to have today. And we do hope that you're going to have a lot of them because, believe me, the guest of today's edition, well, he can tell us a lot. So, another thing, we all are corona free, and uh, to tell you the truth, our guest actually had the corona so he's officially um he can be sitting here without the masks and the third thing that i want to remind you about that the best question will be chosen today by our wonderful guest at the end of the edition so please at the end of the episode so please think about your questions and ask him so this is the time to introduce you to our wonderful guest that i am personally very honored and proud to have here because you know, he doesn't do interviews much. And the only thing that I thought when I was coming to this studio today, please don't screw it up. Because this is a very high responsibility that we're having today with Dipanchu. So today at Lazarski Talks, we're having a program director of economics department in English. Today, we're having a head of econometrics department. Today, we're having a winner of award of the best PhD thesis at the Central Statistical Office and the winner of award for the best PhD thesis of the National Bank of Poland. And to tell you the truth, those are the highest awards for the scientific stuff in economics, very strict and, you know, sometimes angry for a lot of people that you can win in this country. Moreover, today, we're welcoming a great teacher a wonderful supervisor and just an amazing human being, Dr. Beck. Hi. Uh, thank you very much Hello. for being with us. Uh, it's an honor because we know that you don't do this quite yeah, a lot. Maybe enough with the puff piece. Okay. And <laughs> so I am uh, letting you to say hello and okay. you, you can so say... Hi everyone and let's move to the interview. That's right. Let's move to the interview. Yeah. Uh, just a quick thing. What we're going to talk about today, because, uh, you know, a lot of students don't really um, know what exactly can be so interesting about this science communities, econometrics department, econometrics modeling, and all of these things that a lot of students are afraid of. So today we're going to talk about science communities, we're going to talk about possibilities, we're going to talk about how and why to be published in a book, and we're going to talk about very important stuff. Why studying is not just about getting your job. So, are you ready? I'm ready. Cool. Let us go back to Dr. Back <laughs> and to the questions. <laughs> All right. So, uh, hi, my name is Depan Shulakwan and I was uh, one of the best students of Mr. <laughs> Beck. So or do you think so? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, like, I am really happy to ask him some questions, pretty hard ones, but uh, let's start with, uh, sir, tell us about the econometrics department and science communities and uh, what are those and why, why? what's the purpose of them? Uh, Okay, so econometrics department is a unit at the university. Uh, I'm a head of econometrics department and uh, some of the teachers you know work there. Uh, Alexandra Stojkova, uh, Valeria Jersh, Jana Ochrymenko, and we've got also a newcomer, uh, Mateusz Wyszyński. Uh, so basically we are organizing in that way because we do all of our research together. Uh, well, not all. Each of us has a very specific interest, but but there is a lot we do do together. And uh, within the economic tricks department, we created the science community uh, in which students can actually pursue some more ambitious research goals. And uh, so we, like you were in the first uh, year of science community, if I remember correctly, I was trying to teach you R. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is uh, yeah. Mm, uh, it's a programming language, and but generally we were talking about di different uh, projects which 
eventually in your cases actually ended up being your uh, thesis yeah. uh, topics. Thesis. That's right. Uh, what else? Uh, what else we, did we do this? Uh, you taught us R. Like I was not personally aware of R. It was pretty hard for me. But the fact that you made it pretty easy and I could use it in my econom- like uh, thesis, it was pretty good. So I yeah. can actually remind um, uh, all of us about one thing. When we were having one of the meetings at the science community, uh, Doctor Back asked a question. I don't really remember what the question was, but I said I don't know, and he said, "Okay, cool. I can express it in the equation." So at that moment of my life, I thought, "Okay, how stupid I am!" And oh. I, we all were highly motivated by this because uh, I think the purpose of the science community is from the perspective of the student was to know more and to understand that actually the opportunities that we have in this science area are really limitless so but i think it, it was really fun yeah it was it was, it was really, really like fun. when the Panchu and yulian were always arguing about religion yeah, yeah. and, and uh, string theory oh yeah, yeah. Well, mostly religion uh, and calling each other names <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was really fun it was pretty cool so uh, time to move ahead with our next question so as we know that like people might think you uh, will with all these qualifications that you are really a book person but we know that you have a life uh, beside of that so uh, what are one of the cool not one of the cools like what are the hobbies that you have except for when you're not teaching in the university uh, well except for like economics and science in general well I uh, I listen to punk rock a lot uh, you, you've probably already seen my vinyl collection yeah is it 90s music uh, it starts in early 70s and continues up till this point, but not many bands are playing it anymore. Uh-huh. They are usually the same bands. Uh, well, I love it. I, I spend a lot of time listening to it and trying to, to find the, the vinyls uh, uh, that I don't have in my collection. Well, I, I love sci-fi. You, you okay. know this the as well. The Star Wars stuff. And usually we are the t-shirts but I, the, yeah. I, I like star trek more actually this okay. is one of the tv shows i'm gonna force my children to, to watch <laughs> to because it's it good it teaches you good morals and good uh, values like okay. you know the so- futuristic society when there's no money no prejudice uh no homophobia no anything like it everybody's everybody's just really fine with each other and with right. other you know races and there's a lot of killing so we should, well, we actually, not that. Not, not that. I, I, especially when, when I was a kid, that was one thing I didn't like about the Star Trek. That they do not kill a lot. They do not fight a lot. Okay, but okay, but right. now I can actually appreciate all the, say, moral dilemmas they go through. Well, cool. I, and I also love manga, which you probably still haven't seen Berserk, even though I told you. Yeah. Watch <laughs> Berserk. It's the best <laughs> manga uh, anime ever. <laughs> That's cool. All right. We'll keep that in mind. Uh, moving ahead with the next question. Yeah, is... I actually, I actually think uh, we can go to this one, and then I'm going to go to my question because they're kind of right. correlated with each okay, other. Okay, correlated okay. this vocabulary. Correlation, from the correlation. Econometric stuff. <laughs> so, really? okay. So, uh, what's your teaching philosophy, and like, uh, what what's the most interesting part about it? How do you? Well, uh, when I started teaching, I was always uh, trying to teach in a way that I would like to be taught. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, uh, generally, first thing, I, I usually do way harder stuff during class than I actually require from students uh, during the exam, but you also know this. Yeah. Uh, well, I believe like you should have the opportunity to, to learn about this more complicated stuff and more that, uh, that you can use in the future, especially if you, let's just say you finish bachelor and you would like to apply for some uh, university in the West when they do actually have like a really uh, high entry level right. uh, requirements, uh, then then all those things I was teaching you during mathematics uh, and mathematical economics and econometrics in various forms, turns out that it's going to be pretty, pretty useful. And that's another thing, like I always wanted to, uh, to explain stuff, like you, I, I hate when people just uh, learn things without understanding them. So uh, what I'm trying to do is always to start from something very basic and, and explain it in a, in a very tiny steps, although in its formal way as possible. Right, exactly. And I would like to add to that point that uh, mathematics were, was not in my good books uh, from the beginning itself. I was not really good at it. But since I started taking the first classes, I really like the fact that he explained 
the differentiation is there we all know like our viewers also know that but why is there like yeah. why d by dx what is this thing so that was the first time in my masters that i understood okay this is how it works and from then on like the road was pretty easy so the best thing is like if you take the classes and put your attention you're gonna get more than you expect so i actually i actually want to add for the, for that because you know that you're mm, you're different from the understanding of the lecture at the university for a lot of people because you're not you know you're not wearing suits you can you can talk with uh with the students with the same language you're talking but um students literally adore you i mean students who well that that is true and except for those who i failed <laughs> <laughs> but even those i mean even students who have never been to your classes that's the funniest thing because i remembered when i was talking to a guy from the international relations he never had any class with you he said he always says hello he's always positive i don't even know him and so this is the thing that differs you your human to human relationships with the students well and yeah the, well now it's kind of hard well, and especially that I, I do, like I, I already complain about it. That like most of my first year students are afraid of me. Yes. Which is for me, it's extremely bizarre. But uh, they they never had a chance to to we, know me. Better. We were a little bit afraid of you too, honestly. But yeah. you know, because we we have this uh, question, and it is very interesting, especially for people who didn't really had a chance to meet you in in the personal um like in in life uh i remember having this one last class on mathematics and masters with you and uh, like you all know like you all know that mathematics was one of our favorite class during the masters but i remember this last class and you were talking about integrals and about very complicated stuff like it was more complicated than you required from us as a student and it was the last class and you were you know showing the graph and you said look this is a masterpiece doesn't it look great doesn't it look great i swear to god i almost cried at that moment because i was like oh my god he's talking about the thing that is one of the boring stuff for me in my life but it no, was i, I actually marvelous. know because i usually get, get there is a couple of things i get excited about for example like when you uh, uh because when you learn about the integrals it's amazing that you can calculate like when you calculate area of a rectangular, mm -hmm. right? Then, then you multiply one side by the other. And it turns out that you can actually calculate the area of something in which case one side is infinitely long. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it goes to infinity. Yeah, and still we can calculate the area. And actually the, in the example I'm using usually with the students, this area is just one, one unit. Exactly. So it's mm -hmm. the same like as uh, one by one square. And, and it makes perfect <laughs> sense, but it needs a little bit of patience and, you know, taking a couple of steps to understand it. That's cool. So, so now yeah. Anastasia's turn to ask you a really interesting question. It so. is an interesting question, but we need yeah. to, to, to provide people with a little bit of background. So um, just a little personal story uh, from me and from Dipanch. When we were students of master's degree and we were student of uh, Dr. Beck, we were, were writing the thesis with him. Um, unfortunately, we ended up studying online at the very um, end of our master's degree. But I remember that we um, said that we promised to each other one thing. Uh, this is about the contribution of you and your, you know, your uh, actions that you don't really understand sometimes. I mean. Uh, the whole value that you are given to people. So I remember that you and me, we were talking about this final speech at the university that right. probably will, we will happen to give at the graduation. So we were kind of good students. So we promised to each other <laughs> that if one of us will be chosen to give this graduation speech, we're going to take, well, if he's chosen, he's going to take me. If I'm chosen, I'm going to take him to the stage and we're going to do this together. And the main purpose of it all was that if we were on the stage at that moment, the only and the most important thing that we would say is thank you very much, Dr. Beck. Exactly. And that's true. Uh, because of the contribution that you um, actually bring to lives of your students. So. Okay, so may I tell a funny story you as can. well? <laughs> it's actually the first time I met Depanshu. <laughs> and he actually introduced to me 
and I and and uh, when when he said this, you know, it, probably he was also like nervous or something. <laughs> so what I heard actually it was the Punisher, and I actually told him the Punisher. Your parents came up with the coolest name for you. It, it was good. Like you were the first person to point that out. Like mm -hmm. I'm having this name for like uh, 22 years now, and I didn't figure it out. But okay, take nobody some. but I actually heard the Punisher. Oh, maybe my brain wanted to hear it. <laughs> so That's now good. everyone calls the Punisher the Punisher, and his Instagram nickname is the Punisher. Too. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> like it's pretty good. Okay, <laughs> okay, so going right. back to the question, that's a very interesting statistics that we have at Lazarsky University that I want to share with you uh, guys that <coughs> we have comparing to other, like any other university, I think in Poland, in Warsaw for sure. We have quite a lot of young teachers here at the university. We have quite a lot of young teachers at the economic faculty. And the statistics says that 95% of people who are now teaching, the, the youngest teachers who are now teaching at Lazarsky University are your ex-students. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's an amazing stuff. And when I when I understood, because we, we all know about this, but when I understood that, like, literally, we have 100% 100 of young teachers here and 95 is yours, it's impressive. Can you comment it somehow? Well, generally, I was... Uh... Uh, when I see somebody that has a talent and potential and it's interested in this, uh, then I uh, try to, to give them a job. Like, the stories are usually very different because like everybody wants a different thing. Uh, like, well, in my department, uh, there is like everybody is like an overachiever. So you have Jana, who you know very well, who's, uh, uh, who, who's, whose knowledge for her age is just ridiculous. It is. Uh, she actually is uh, finished, uh, almost finished with her PhD. So in a couple of months, she's, she's going to be a doctor. Uh, Valeria actually, uh, when she started working here, was 22 or 23. And she uh, graduated master's in Belgium in a very good university. I can never remember the <laughs> name. Uh, it's Belgian, so so it's uh, it's hard. And uh, and uh, Sasha, I think he, she's 24. And actually, Sasha also had like a really good year because she also won the same uh, prize that I did in NBP, uh, National Bank of Poland, uh, but uh, for master thesis. Uh, of course, and uh, well, Ma Mateusz uh, just joined in, but uh, I, I, I'm sure that, especially after what he already, because we've been working for on, on one project, and he usually does things even better than I ask him to do. Uh, so I'm sure they are gonna uh, accomplish a lot. But you know, when uh, especially when I see young people who want to uh, uh, want to do something in science, generally to uh, and and find that uh, working at the university is something they are interested in. I always uh, try to support them, and thanks to actually authorities management of this university, uh, we have this very uh, welcoming policy to young people. And I think that uh, you know you or Julian, yeah. which the two of you are our two newest. Uh, uh, employees yeah, yeah. Uh, you can connect with young people way better so especially when you teach workshops is very often uh, important especially that I'm getting older and older I don't understand young people anymore <laughs> uh, and uh, the second thing like what, what I said it's uh, that uh, management helps a lot like uh, actually uh, when Valeria was uh, uh, our university actually paid for part of Valeria's education in Belgium. Actually, as I learned a couple of uh, weeks ago, actually, president gave her four, four times as much money as he told that told me he's going to get her. So he was very actually... Uh, uh, so, so, so this, the, 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 so in this environment is really very easy to, to accomplish something like that. Mm, are you proud of that fact? Oh, very. All right, but but do you really understand like your the level of your contribution to all of the lives of, of your well, young like I, I try not to think about it but I look what I can definitely tell you that I'm sure that all all four of my workers and Rodi on my future work uh, hopefully I'm gonna, are gonna, ask gonna about accomplish it. way more than I did at my age 
Can and w one reason, okay, one reason for that is I'm making sure that they are not making my mistakes from the past. And, but the rest is up to them. Mm, can you tell us about the, because you're one of your favorite students, Rodion. Yeah, uh, Rodion, if, if you're watching if us. If you're watching us, we're I saying hello to you. I, uh, he was writing a thesis. Yep. And he needed some special software. I don't really remember what was it, but he needed something. So one of your students, and the university supports it. Yeah, the university actually bought it. So I, I really think it's very... Uh, no, but, uh, it, it was... Okay, I'm not going to get into details of the estimation process and likelihood function parameters that we needed to estimate. But uh, the thing was that uh, I was rewriting a code for for this specific, specific econometric method. And I uh, and I and I rewritten the first page of it, and I got so tired of it because it was really hard, and uh, and I actually told Rodion maybe you can give it a try, and uh, we stopped talking about it. And after I think after a f after one or two months, he came up with finish and he finished everything. It works perfectly. We are now working on a paper actually. Uh, to publish it, and uh, well, uh, I, I went to uh, to our dean of, uh, of, of I'm going to call dean of science, I don't know how to translate it properly, Adrian Hoyan, we also th thank you for for the support, and uh, he actually uh, agreed that, that we can buy the kid, uh, um, the the kid. Rodion, uh, we can buy him uh, uh, some software and, and he will excel in, in, in this. Great. But I, I just wanted, really wanted to share the statistics because it's really impressive and um, I think you should be proud of <laughs> well, I <am>. exactly. <laughs> this fact. Uh, I would like to point out a thing that you said, you make sure that your student doesn't make the same mistake as you and like obviously that's the point, uh, point and the best part about being a teacher to like guide them. So there are two people, two types of people, one who have natural talent for doing something and those who have, uh, who put in hard work and then succeed at something. So in your opinion, what do you think? Like one can beat another hard work or talent? Well, I believe that in the long run, uh, the hard worker usually beats the talent. Well, depending on how you use the talent. Well, I have this amazing thing about explaining the life as an autoregressive process, but I do not have a blackboard to, to, <laughs> to elaborate on that. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's like uh, Nobel Prize winners usually are not the most intelligent people. They are most hardworking people. Well, they they are way way above uh, average in, in in terms of intellect. But what you get what gets you there is hard work, and it's usually like that with everything. I very often see it with uh, first year students when when I have very brilliant uh, first year uh, students, and let's just say some some not that brilliant, but but the, some very talented people. Uh, they slack off. They do not work. Uh, a lot and on the other hand uh, those a little bit less talented people are working very very hard and after three years of studies or two years in your case uh, it changes completely you know the the people that were actually working well uh, that is one of the things that we're gonna talk about later but the three years of studying changes you as a human being mm -hmm. and if you use this uh, appropriately it will make you a better person, but in, in various different ways. It makes you more intelligent, it makes you more knowledgeable, but it generally helps you to deal with life better. And if you work hard for a long time enough, uh, it, it's gonna benefit you. Of course, if you're, if you're talented to begin with, it's easier. Yeah. Uh, but without the hard work, it's really hard to get anywhere. Right. Awesome, um, that's, a, that's a really cool answer. So uh, moving ahead with the question, I would like to ask you, so since last year, as we are all going through this uh, crazy phase of our lives, pandemic and everything. So I would like, like to ask you, what type of uh, methods have you adopted to cope up with this, like teaching online? And um, you have a YouTube channel, right? Yeah. So like, please tell us about it. Well, so, so it started quite naturally because I needed to move lectures uh, to uh, on the internet. Mm -hmm. But then we started actually expanding it uh, on it. Like we got a lot of comments from people outside our university to do some stuff. 
and uh, sometimes when we do not uh, 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 when we have enough of, of time we make additional videos just uh, just for everyone if, if somebody asks us to do to do so but mainly uh, uh, like the thing when when we needed to do uh, online uh, uh, online semester again mm -hmm. well I figured out like for example for mathematics I can actually you know I have only 30 hours to basically feel like 50 hours of material mm -hmm. so I always need to cut back on something I need to explain something not in as much detail as I could and uh, so this year this year I was able to go through everything in extreme detail and I was actually very happy about it. Well, of, of course, I'm making some mistakes from time to time. Sometimes they are so stupid, but uh, hopefully nobody can see it. Uh, so, sometimes people point it out. Or they're just afraid of you and they cannot tell you about No, no, that. there's always somebody on the internet to, to point that you're doing something wrong. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, so, like, can you tell us, like, uh, where can the students reach you on YouTube? What's the name of the channel? Uh, it's called LU Department of Econometrics. Yeah, and we're going to go back to that soon uh, okay. because we're going to talk about some channels that you recommend mm -hmm. yeah. uh, watching. And uh, I had one more question, but it actually just went somewhere. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to remind you, you, whatever you are, uh, that please ask the questions to our guests because you probably won't get another chance. So please, we're waiting for your questions. We have actually three of them, but I'm gonna just slow down a little bit with, and we're gonna go back with for our yeah. two hour questions. But still, you have uh, half an hour. Now's the time. And now's the time. And uh, remember about the gift for the perfect question. Yeah, so. better ask good questions. So uh, there's a thing called book competition. And that, and yeah, and that's actually that's actually the very first time when you're going to talk about this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. Uh, uh, this is not the first time that it happens, but this is uh, uh, so uh, within the science community, I always uh, advise students and uh, trying to convince them to publish papers to uh, to actually do some more ambitious research. Especially that even if you do not want do not want to be a scientist or anything like it, uh, it, it still looks amazing on your CV when you have a paper published in a in a or, or a book published like Anastasia is going to have soon, or like Dapanshu has with his uh, paper. Well, it's happening also soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, his his paper is after reviews, but uh, he still needs to wait uh, until actually it's published. It's it takes extremely long time uh, in, in this world right okay uh, but so uh, would uh, so me and uh, Jana Okrimenko are going to edit a book this year and basically what I wanted to say is that uh, we're gonna like any student that that wants to try it I uh, can create some research paper it doesn't need to be very long preferably not very long Definitely not more than 25 pages and uh, they can send it to us uh, Let's just say by the end of this year and uh, if if it's good enough, it's gonna be well I think around six will get published uh, Definitely uh, If but even if 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 the if the paper is not good enough as it is I can we, we will recommend what you should change about it of course, the paper needs to be about economics and it needs to have use of some empirical data, preferably with the econometric model. But uh, I don't want to discourage anybody uh, too soon. Uh, so there is opportunity. The, bo the book is going to be probably published around summer, published around summer. So you have plenty of time, as I told you, till the end of the year. Yes, and I welcome your uh your contributions and your prospects and exactly in the book like you go through two phases one is econometric part and the second one is English part and believe me <laughs> yeah. the English part is way harder than the econometrics because just to correct the comma mistake and the spelling mistake you're gonna take a lot of time but don't worry about the other one well, he has your back <laughs> <laughs> but awesome. is it the competition just for the economic faculty students? no no everybody can but but usually uh, usually mostly people from economics have let's just say tools needed to be published yeah. in, a, in, in this kind of uh, book. But anyways, if you're a management student and you are interested in economics, econometrics, you can at least try to apply of for course, it. Of well, course, of course. We would be more than welcome. 
Wonderful. Um, we actually have Wonderful. some questions from the students that I think is the time to yeah, ask. Okay. So the first one, no, I think I'm going to start with the last one. Mr. Beck, it's a good idea to have a YouTube channel, but don't you miss face to face lectures? Of course. No, yeah, of course I, I miss, like, it's, it's generally, you cannot even believe how boring <laughs> it is to talk to, uh, to your phone, uh, for six hours a day and then edit it and, uh, yeah, then finding out that, that somebody, uh, came in and you, I, I didn't notice that, that they, they moved something. Or, uh, or that, that I actually misspelled something and I need to correct all of it. No, it's, it's horrible. I, I'm happy that it's in there, finally. But I, I, I honestly can't wait until going to class and, and, and having normal class. And not have to repeat myself like four times with the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure the students want the same as well. Yeah. And we have the question, when will you start your offline education? But I think, unfortunately, we don't have the answer to that. Well, uh, I can, w what I can tell you is that the university uh, definitely cannot wait to start. Uh, but the only thing that actually binds us is the Polish law and the pandemic. So I hope we're going to have, but, but I hope we're going to have a regular normal semester, uh, in autumn. Yeah. yeah. So basically, from the next, yeah, from next the next, next, semester. next year, unfortunately. Right. Okay. Mm. As you said that you do not want your student to have mistakes you had, what main things you would love to tell your younger self? Oh my God. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Like to be perfectly honest, I would like, Anastasia actually, because she asked me the same question privately many times and she always can accept my answer. Uh, uh, but, well, you, you always have like things you, you don't want to, uh, you didn't want it to do, like dating wrong girl or uh, ha just being in a wrong place at a, at a wrong time. Uh, but, you, but I think, well, I, I would definitely party less, drink less and spend more time studying. Yeah, note that down, children. Yeah, <laughs> I. But uh, but well, you you always need to find some balance in your life. You cannot just study and do anything else. Uh, but definitely, you cannot just party and do anything else unless you're you're a DJ or something. But you combined yeah, it. <laughs> you yeah. combined the teaching, uh, the 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 studying and the parties. Yeah, but you you know how much I needed to catch up uh, to get to where I am. That probably I would be way where further in and, my and, life. And that's where your talent coped up with the hard work thing well yeah yeah at some point you need to do it true uh we have three questions <laughs> the first one is how old are you 57 <laughs> 57 yeah, okay 57. Well, well i don't i don't really think it's um uh, no i'm 34 yeah but i think this is the first official time when you said your age <laughs> it's not not like I'm hiding it, because uh, when you were having a birthday last year, uh, your students were completely sure that you're twenty nine, twenty eight, twenty eight, I, I guess, yeah. yeah. And we were completely sure in that fact. So now we, we are know. just trying to be nice. <laughs> now we know that he is an old, uh, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful <laughs> human being. Uh, another question: How you became a Lazarski University teacher? Oh well. It was kind of by accident. Uh, uh, I, uh, our previous, previous dean, Professor Binkowski, was a friend with my thesis supervisor. He recommended me. Uh, Professor Binkowski, uh, again, hi to Professor Hello, Binkowski. Uh, he definitely watches it on Instagram. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so uh, he, he actually uh, asked me for a talk. And he kind of, how to, I, I don't know how to say it. So he kind of fell in love with me, <laughs> uh, in, in a, you know, the scientific sense. He, he knew that I'm really into it. Uh, so he brought me here and, uh, well, he, he got me this job and, and I stayed and I, I never regretted it. So yeah, yeah the, 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 it was kind of, well, I, I definitely knew that I want to be in science, but I ended up here by accident, but I believe that is the one of the best things that ever happened to me. So yeah. I'm having a question straight away. Um, you could have been working at any corporation, the biggest and the best corporation uh, you could ever think well, about. Uh, look, probably, uh, well, it's hard to say. The like, probability is like one. 
Well, 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 lately I've been called by one, but I said no. <laughs> okay, okay, so you, it's yeah. just not your yeah. thing. You just no. like this university. Stuff. Yeah, like you, you kind of know me. Like I, I, I hate. I, I cannot wear a suit. <laughs> like this yeah. is this is horrible. Like if I if I like uh, even when I'm dressed like that, I feel weird. Uh, and uh, that, that and uh, the, the second thing is in corporation, you do some things uh, for people you don't know. You just make money for people you don't know. Uh, and here I'm actually able, first, working with students is extremely fun. And uh, like big part of my job that students actually don't see is to do my own research. And when I do my own research, I can actually do whatever I want. I read about anything I want. I examine anything I want. And uh, like this, this brings me, you know, a lot of freedom. Right. Plus the summers are great because I have four months of vacation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, we have not a question, but a comment from our wonderful colleague, uh, Julian, who is saying, too bad I'm working instead of watching that properly. Julian, hi, watch us on YouTube. And, uh, you know, he has already been here. So yeah. I have a newcomer All instead of you. All the work. <laughs> uh, okay, we have two questions that are very, very connected and a little bit controversial, I would say. So the first one is um, why you're not using Teams lessons, so Microsoft Teams. And the student says it's a little bit boring watching YouTube videos. Well, I, I don't like when you have mathematics lectures, uh, there's not much more I can do with it. Yeah, but, but honestly, we, we can we can actually prove it that because we had your uh, lessons on uh, offline. And uh, believe us, it's even easier to to make it and to have it on YouTube because you. Yeah, but you you had a different classes because back then I was also doing workshops. Now now a younger generation is doing workshops. I'm sticking with the with the lectures. Uh, it's really hard to t plus it's really hard to teach mathematics without a blackboard. It's like like for me it's impossible. Even if when I was trying to to do some stuff with the. Oh my God! How is it called? Well, the iPod, mm -hmm. right? And r writing things like it always doesn't come out like the, the way it should be. So it would take me probably a very, very long time to explain anything, and it wouldn't be the way that that I actually wanted to. So yeah, yeah. Like uh, uh, plus, my inspiration was actually lectures, uh, mathematics lectures from MIT. This is like one of the best universities uh, in the world. And uh, so, so I decided to do it in a very, very similar way. And I think it's even easier because you can, you know, if you have a YouTube, you can rewatch it, rewatch it, pause, you know, make the notes. And uh, I think it's it's a very, very bright idea to make uh, mathematical lectures on the YouTube because uh, sometimes it's not enough just to listen uh, two hours to the lecture and then go and write an exam. So I think those who are having mathematics now, they have an advantage of this. Exactly. And yeah. you have way easier <laughs> exam than they had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've never seen their exams. So you but don't know but still, we scored easy. pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, but your exam was way more complicated than theirs. Yeah. So, <laughs> take this chance okay. and don't fail yeah. your mathematics exam. Don't mess exam. it up. Uh, we have another question. Especially the next on. year, when we're going back to class normally, exam is going to be three times harder. So, <laughs> take your time now and uh, be happy about that. Hold yeah. on, we have another okay, question. Okay. Sometimes when I watch your videos, I think how awful it can be if everything that you described and wrote on the desk did not filmed and you see it just in the end. Did you have the situations during remote education? Oh my god! <laughs> the microphone! Don't touch the microphone! Oh, <laughs> so many times, you know, it, it happened to like once, like I was using this, th that was the worst think I was uh, I had like six or eight hours of material oh my God. and I had this broken cable and actually I, I, I was always doing that delete everything from the phone Aww. after after it gets to your uh, to, to your computer and it broke down uh, everything was deleted uh, so it took me like b because like redoing the same thing again takes you way way longer it's horrible and and i, w I think it, it took me like three days to rebuild it oh, and i no. was so mad it, it was over somewhere between six and our eight hours of, of videos that's a lot of so pain. just take a moment of appreciation of yeah. how, how how much work it is actually harder 
for you to make a YouTube video, to edit it, to upload it, than just to go to the lecture and just say, hi, oh, yeah. let's do this. Especially that, that in the lecture, there is a different flow. Yeah. Like, I do not uh, feel constrained. I, 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 well, the only worst thing about the lectures is I cannot talk as much as I would like to about things that I can on online because I'm not constrained by time. Uh, however, it's especially, you know, when I do the lectures online, I usually explain everything three or four times over uh, because I'm not sure that everybody got it. And uh, in class, I usually know when people understood and I can move on. So I don't need to repeat myself this many times. Exactly. Okay. And waking up early, that, that part as well. That's <laughs> waking up early, yeah, if you have oh, yeah, classes at <laughs> eight in the morning. <laughs> well, th th that's okay. actually I liked because I usually... Another comment. I'm sorry. I just, okay, I just okay. cannot people do this. Really curious. So, that's no, no, no. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's, that's a question. So we have a um, comment and a question. I just wanted to say that I was fascinated by your way of teaching. It is quite sad not to have your classes, but I'm happy that I have the possibility to have your math class offline my question is we all know that you love science and math but how can you say that much energetic and motivated every single time oh my god i don't know how to uh, thank you uh Good well I, I just I, I like it it's and uh, you know uh, the thing is i'm not a mathematician but i teach mathematics for a, a very simple reason and uh, everything i say in mathematics it's true and this is the only subject you can have in which everything is true. Uh, I, I know that probably teachers from uh, even economics, because I'm an economist, I'm not a, I'm not a mathematician, but teachers from uh, economics, management, international relation, law can disagree. But the truth is, uh, the things they teach you, they can never be 100% sure they are true. Because, uh, like, they have some hypotheses which are better or worse proven. In case of mathematics, everything is true. So, this is the only subject in, in which I have the right answer for every question. And uh, so, this is why I, I like teaching it. Because, I, uh, well, I'm not definitely not saying that I know everything about mathematics. Because, first of all, this is not my... Uh, I, I have PhD in economics, not, not in mathematics. But... Uh, this is a subject, uh, uh, well, it, for me, it's really fascinating how, how everything uh, it works is extremely useful, but this is, uh, this is where you can actually be sure that everything you're hearing will stay exactly the same if somebody is going to be teaching it 200 years from now. If, if you're going to go to management, economics, international uh, relations lecture 100 years from now, you're going to be taught completely different things. But if you're going to go to introductory mathematics, like the class like we have, you, you know, 1 plus 1 is still going to be 2, uh, and derivative of x squared is still going to be 2x. It will never change, because this is how mathematics work. Even in, in uh, was it, econometrics, we can, we can never reject the hypothesis, right? Yeah, we can yeah. just, ax um, how do you call it? accepted no 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 we can <laughs> no 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 we can reject and not reject we can never accept the hypothesis because there is always a little chance that yeah, something uh, will screw up yeah, right exactly. uh well we have another <laughs> another question about how often do you record your our lessons on youtube but i think you already answered that that it happened to you i don't think you counted uh well for the usually i was coming here from monday uh till saturday every day uh, uh, like i i had i usually had uh, sunday off but i was staying here between eight and ten hours wow every day well i wasn't like like uh, working all the time but plus uh, you need to have a flow for that mm -hmm. especially yeah. when 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 i saw you know when i see that uh that actually the video i made uh, that should be supposed to take 40 minutes uh i didn't record it uh, then, then I need I need probably to have like half uh, half an hour or an hour off just to cool off, <laughs> uh, because th it, when I'm mad, uh, th that's when I'm making mistakes. Uh, no okay, we have uh, one more question, Dipancho. I'm sorry, no, we're no, gonna get okay. back to that, like, but you know, it's, it's I just a good have thing to, that yeah. students are asking. Pretty mm, good. A very nice question. Has YouTube started to pay off? <laughs> oh no, 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 and probably from from what I know, it, it never gonna. Well. 
So, like, there is a thing about YouTube that you have to have 1,000 subscribers. So, like, please help him reach 1,000. He then already has 1,000, I suppose. Almost. Almost. Almost like, so, subscribe. Make it 1,000 gonna... and then he's going to get paid. We all will be really happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just a hypothesis. I'm not sure that it's working, <laughs> that it's well, working I, this I, way. I, I don't think it, w it, it is that easy. But, but still. Anyways, we have another question that I want to ask right after you're going to ask about... The eighth one this one but we have one more question that i really wanted to ask you because i think uh, you're gonna like it and your fiance just liked it <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you prefer american punk rock or british do you pay attention more to lyrics or to the groove of the songs oh i definitely prefer american uh well the the british british punk rock was was had they, they started it to some extent uh, but all of my favorite bands are from United States. Well, a couple of them from Canada, but uh, 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 but my favorite bands like Bad Religion, Descendants, No NoFX, uh, Rise Against, or Strike Anywhere. They are all from uh, microphone. Uh, microphone. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are all from uh, from United States, and I definitely uh, uh, I, I basically do not know any any other good ones from Great Britain. And uh, and when it comes to it's it's really hard. Like some some songs like have extremely good lyrics, uh, especially when you listen to 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 bands like uh, Bad Religion or No Effects. And there are other bands that, that actually have make amazing music that that could actually. Well, okay, my fiance doesn't think so, but I believe that that could go mainstream, like Rise Against. So I I actually think that depends on the band and on the song. Okay. okay, but I, I, I like this question. This person won. I had <laughs> no doubt about that. I, I was waiting because you know what? He, he, oh. he... I knew that yeah. this is going to happen. Okay. He's going to kill us from, from, from the side, but it's mm -hmm. okay. It's still working. So Because, you know, he texted this to the microphone, uh, microphone Microsoft Teams, and I was waiting for this uh, question, and he copied and passed it to the Instagram, so this guy was really uh, waiting mm, uh, for his time. So, uh, Di Pancho. Yeah, okay, okay. So my question would not be this one, but I had a better question. Cool. Uh, we so you have, you have yeah, a better question than yeah, my it question. Was, it was an nice. inside job between me and Mr. Beck. Uh, which one we are doing? No, it's like, okay. I, will, I will make up this question. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, like, people who study in the university usually have the complaint, like, okay, we are going to study it, but how can we use it in the real life? So please did, elaborate. Did you like, really make that up? Yeah. Because we have the same question, how do you apply your economic, economic knowledge in your current life? She copied my question. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Look, starting with uh, mathematics, maybe, mm, because I know that for many people, this seems extremely abstract. Yeah. And actually, it's true. Uh, the world of mathematics is an imaginary world, uh, but uh, it has um, amazing applications. You know, the, the sole fact that we can record this and, uh, and you can watch it, uh, it's because of mathematics. But I think that the thing that mathematics uh, gives you uh, the best thing you can you get from mathematics is that it teaches you to think in a strictly logical way. It's pure logics. You cannot mm, uh, oh my god beat Ma around the bush. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's better than than what I had to, <laughs> wanted to say. Uh, you you cannot cheat with mathematics. You can. Uh, you cannot uh, figure something out. You just need to go through a straight way, right to your answer, and it must be a logical way. And it, uh, and when you realize that, when you learn some stuff of, uh, from mathematics, you can actually apply it. Uh, you can actually apply it in your real life, uh, even without ev even knowing. You just make better decisions, better choices, because you can better weight your op alternatives. And here's where economics comes in, because economics is basically a science. Like, well, it's not 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 the definition, but from the perspective of the, of a student, is a science of how to make rational choices. So, what do you need to do to maximize your benefit, to maximize your earnings? <coughs> and uh, when you understand couple of uh, mm, couple of simple rules, how to do it, you start to doing unconsciously. You start to do it. Uh, it you start to do it on an everyday basis. Like I remember, like once I went uh, to the bank and, and this lady wanted to give me uh, 
uh, give me a loan. And she was trying to explain it to me. And I actually asked her six times to, to explain the same thing to me. And then I realized she either didn't understand herself, what she was trying to sell me, or she was trying to rip me off, you know, and uh, I still don't know, uh, I still don't know what it was, uh, but because I knew mathematics and I knew economics, and look, I didn't know the specific law requirements for uh, on this agreement she was proposing. I'm not an expert on banking's uh, on banking's products or anything like that. But I knew a couple of simple rules. I knew how interest rates are compounding, how you add interest rate to each other. And and, and I knew that she's just selling me popkiss. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's not a dirty word. Okay, okay. what does it mean? It's, it's like BS, yes, but, uh, okay. but nice. <laughs> okay, nice, yes. Wonderful. Right. Uh, okay, so we're uh, very polite here. Uh, we have a comment from Magda Mishkovska. Dr. Beck, thank you for showing me that lecturers at Lazarski don't have to wear formal clothes. Oh, so she, so she started after me? Yeah, I, th I think so. Okay. Oh, that's an Good. inspiration. We, should, we started a big, bigger movement. Uh, revolution, that's yeah. a revolution. <laughs> <laughs> what is this on your t-shirt, by the way? Oh, th that's Descendants. That's very good. Uh, very good album, very good band. Actually, the the leader of this band You're is talking a, here. Oh, I'm sorry. Or is there. a PhD. Uh, <laughs> has a PhD in biology, and uh, but but their uh, their lyrics. Well, they have one one album just about farts. So uh, <laughs> you don't need. Even when you're very smart, it doesn't need. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have uh, everything needs to be you know stuck up. Nice. Uh, should we move to the YouTube channels? Oh, uh, how much time do we have? We have, uh, well, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, okay, look, maybe you have some more questions. Yeah, that's, yeah but uh, we, can, we can move to the channels and then we can uh, go with the questions. I okay. think it's just going to okay, be more Okay, 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 let's go to the channels. I am ruling okay, here. Okay, would I be able to <laughs> see? Yes, you will, because I prepared everything for you. Okay. So, uh, but we have to explain it a little bit to people. So, now we're going to show you uh a youtube channel of lazarsk university department of econometrics that uh, dr beck was talking about today and we have i hope you have we have cool yes you have the screenshot of the channels so uh tell our viewers a little bit about each and every channel if you see those i think you do yeah okay so uh look because i'm always remaking this page and i'm adding new things uh, like I wanted to, to show you a couple of channels that we got there. They're not directly needed for your classes, but uh, with the things I think you might uh, find very interesting. Okay, uh, I want to start actually with this one. This is MIT Open Courseware. They don't see this thing. Okay. So they just see the, no the, the okay, name. Okay, but, but you Third see MIT yeah. OCW. So actually in this channel you get actual courses from uh, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, one of the best schools uh, in the entire world. Uh, and when you can actually watch the entire classes from the beginning till the end and go through any subject, well, th they have. And very similar channel you can find a little bit lower, it's Yale courses. Uh, actually, MIT will have more interesting things uh, for uh, uh, for economics and management students, I think in Yale, but of course this is not always the case. Uh, you will find more interesting stuff for international relations students. Also, like for international relations students, I would definitely recommend. Do uh, well, this is for every everyone's, but I added actually three channels there. Uh, like those two are about. Those two, you have to read, oh, oh, read the names. Yeah, I, I, uh, Real Time will be with Bill Meyer and Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Uh, those are kind of comedy politics shows uh, which, from which you can get a lot of information and you can... Uh, and they are really fun. You will laugh a lot. They swear a lot, so, so actually... Uh, they are, uh, this is not a typical boring uh, channel. And the same is with this uh, Joe Rogan experience you yeah. see over here. You seen it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's awesome. <laughs> Crazy man. Awesome. Yeah, he's, uh, he's actually making interviews with scientists, politicians, but sometimes actors. And, uh, and he, he t just talks to people for hours. Uh, but it's really, really uh, great. 
Uh, okay, I also made a couple of like this Eddie Wu channel. You can see over here is for uh, this is this amazing guy who actually explains very very uh, simple mathematics in a very very simple way. Uh, so if you do not understand something from my from before my classes, this is where you can uh, you can go. Here is official channel uh, also of the Economist. Where you can get a, where, where you can get actually very professional reports on the current events, uh, and generally I would recommend to, to you to see more because like the, uh, the Gauss and MATLAB are for those of you who use this type of software, but I know that this is not much. But in in this Stat Quest and uh, on this Ben Number channel, you can find a lot of materials that can help you with your statistics and econometrics classes and explain in extremely extremely easy and accessible way so guys you have to go to the youtube channel of lazarsky university econometrics department subscribe for the channel give them the likes and have an access to this wonderful uh, collection of the youtube uh, channels that might be very very useful for you so thank you very much for the recommendations and we have the following question um that is the following are you planning to do any scientific research on math in the near future well i i use it like in my case is the other way around i use math to do my research in economics so mm -hmm. i it depends on what what is the problem i'm trying to uh to deal with i either use like i have some hypothesis and i'm trying to verify it using like some mathematical model but usually through econometrics and uh, the other possibility uh, uh, the other possibility is that um, uh, we are building like small artificial economies. So something I did with uh, uh, during international economics and finance class. But generally, uh, in this case, we are just using mathematics to like build an economy, and we are trying to see what happens when we change things inside. But um, do you remember that moment of your life when you decided that you're gonna? Mm, did you want to do economics and mathematics, not some journalist stuff or some managerial stuff? No, no. I actually, when I when I went, went to uh, when I went to uh, to studying, I think I'm gonna become some manager, businessman, or somebody like that. Uh, but th then I figure out that I'm way more into like for me, it was such a big disappointment that economics is so little about mathematics. I know that you probably disagree with that, but I thought it's gonna be like uh, it's, it's you're gonna get formula for everything, and then then I then I learned that it actually is so much about human behavior, and there's so much things that are unpredicted, so many things that are, we don't just simply don't know, and uh, so like at some moment I started to you know moving in the in the direction of trying to understand it better. And I thought that becoming a scientist is the best way to to figure it out as much as it can. Right. Should we read this question? Uh, you want to read it? Which one? Oh, this is in Russian. No, this okay. <laughs> Do you just listen to the punk music or you can play some instruments or maybe thought, or maybe though. Or maybe thought about your own band. Yeah, thought the thought spelling is wrong, but it's no, okay. It's thought okay. about it's the own band. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. okay uh, so uh, actually my, my student Rodion is teaching me to play the guitar, but I'm really doing really bad. <laughs> uh, but but I, the problem is I don't have that that much time. I would love to to play, like I look look how to say it. Like I was born to be a rock star. The only thing I was missing was talent. <laughs> yeah, very well put. Yeah. So so it would be great. But but unfortunately I cannot play instrument. Definitely I cannot sing. <laughs> well, we never heard that, but <laughs> probably uh, one time. Yeah. You Although know. my dog loves how I sing. <laughs> And my, my fiance who was actually in a choir and, and actually has well, has some ability in it, he hates when she sings. He, she, she slaps her on the face actually when she tries. And when he when I'm starting to sing, like he, he just just wanna jump on me and just play. Because, because you. your fiance is singing like a human and you're like closer to the abilities. Yeah. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. Which we suppose that your dog is uh, really uh, smarter than a lot of people because to spend that much time with the economics and the econometric models right. around. Oh yeah, but he he doesn't pay that. Yeah, by the way, tell us about your dog because this is the love of your life. Right, and like yeah, my fiance is definitely <laughs> no, like I mean, this, very this, happy to the hear the second, that. the second, well, second. The, the dog life, 
of your life. Yeah. Uh, so uh, generally, the the thing was that I didn't want a dog. Like, like I'm a workaholic, and uh, like I always thought, like it's really unnecessary. It's a lot of responsibilities. But my fiance was like, for two years, let's get a dog, let's get a dog, let's get a dog. And after two years of you know going uh, behind my ear and, and and screaming about the dog, well, I finally said yes. And uh, it was we were coming back from the vacation, and I was still not very enthusiastic about it. But then 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 we went to to get a dog, and there were these two small Labradors. The first one, the smaller one, just just ran to me, started licking my face. I, I fell in love with him. From the first moment, I said that, that I'm going to carry him for the rest of the road. Even if he pees on me and poops on me, I don't care. Uh, because I love him so much. And uh, it stayed like that. Like, uh, like, uh, he, uh, like I do most of walking with him, uh, feeding him. I, 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 I make sure that he goes to the doctors. and uh, Like, I'm very responsible. And I o the thing is, I always put his needs uh, over mine. Like uh, he's the well, he's the only person at, uh, in our house that person. eats meat. Yeah, yep. <laughs> he's treated as a person uh, who who eats meat. Uh, he's the only uh, a person who eats regularly, because like I usually when I work I, I, I get uh, like one meal a day, and and he always needs to be fed appropriately. So yeah, yeah, he's the love of my life. And we have oh, the a second. <laughs> And we have a comment from Julian. I love guts. We all do. We love your wonderful dog. And we remember this little uh, yeah, animal was, at the university, much. like this much. And now he is like... 34 kilos. 34 kilos, right. Uh, we have a comment. Being a rock star in your soul explains all your motivation and energy on the videos. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, we have a question that uh, is a little bit weird for me, but I think I have to read it because it's a question from our student. Uh, can you make me happy and give 100 from the final exam? Yeah, if you can make me happy and <laughs> you write all the correct answers. Well, that's the, <laughs> that's, the, that's the end of the story. I think that's the end of the question. <coughs> um, cool. Um, we actually have a question, one more question. That is your yeah. part now. Uh, because a lot of people, you know, you, you are one of the considered to be by a lot of students uh, by one of the strictest one of the hardest teachers at this university so basically there is a hypothesis that 50% of your student loves and adores you and 50% of the students really uh, are afraid of you they're just afraid of you because um, of the level of the material that you are teaching um, why do you teach more than it is required yeah, well, but I, I do not expect them to do it on the exam and I tell them. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about the exam. It's just about... Uh, well, because I want to give them the best education they can be so they can just take... Uh, yeah, so they, they, they can take everything they, they know and actually apply it. When If they go to some university in the West, when I, what, which is something I always recommend, uh, because... It's good to, to uh, actually then, then go to another university, experience some new country. I know that now it's hard with the pandemic and everything. Uh, but uh, I, I, I want to be sure that after my classes, they are perfectly prepared for that. Plus, uh, you know, when we, what we teach you during uh, classes is like really basics, like a real basics of what, what is done in the real world. I know that it might seem complicated at the beginning, but you know, uh, f uh, for from the perspective of scientists, what we teach you are like simple necessities. So I want to give you give us give students so a, a better glimpse into the uh, into how it works in the real world. Well, not real world, but real world of oh, maybe the good example is my international economics class. Well, I was teaching like I I actually built with my students this smaller official economy to show them how today's trade models work. But I was telling them constantly, this is not going to be on the exam, don't worry, there's, because there was plenty of mathematics to arrive at just a couple of simple conclusions. But if one of you would turn up to work at WTO and you will have to examine the impact of some policy, this is the type of model you would be using actually to examine it. So. Uh, it's better that if you if you want to have especially some more ambitious job to know how those things work and uh, the second thing is 
Uh, I believe that it's one of the best things you can learn at the university is to learn hard things because ability to learn uh, look uh, is like my friend who uh, finished actually Lazarski uh, he went to his uh, it wasn't his first but third job was at Ernst and & Young and where he was a fine odd no he was an auditor auditor but basically for the first four months the only thing he was doing was learning law and he finished economics and you know he did he didn't have any any choice so when you go to university and I know it's really more pleasant when you learn easy stuff but it's when it's not challenging when it doesn't actually makes you mad from time to time and force you uh, to to actually work hard it means that you're not doing it right so you're not learning uh, what you should learn and you're not increasing uh, your potential you're just staying in the same place so one of the best things you can get from universities the ability to learn more complicated things that which is probably now the most important skill you can have at any job and you can use it after all for the scientific purposes and for the real like job at whatever you want exactly okay we have one more comment uh, guts hi i definitely know where the inspiration came from this is the same guy who asked you about the punk uh, music give him two awards <laughs> because guts is actually from berserk the ones you still the two of you still haven't seen please watch it oh. not for people with uh, uh let's just say uh faint heart <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, we'll do all right you have any more questions yeah, I just have one last question. Um, that's a kind of important one, because what do you... Uh, hold up, let me just see. I think, nice. uh, because we still have... That was in the topic. No, no, no. We're, we're, no, we're I, think, I think we... We uh, look like high school people who were not prepared for the exam. <laughs> no, no, it's a eighth question. Like, I'll, I'll ask you, okay. Okay. So, what do you mean by saying that the university is not just about the getting the job? Oh, that was it. That was it. Okay, yeah. look. Uh, probably we touched this subject a little bit, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but I think, uh, you know, of course, like when you when you go to university, you think about getting a job, but there's a plenty other things. Like, like, for example, you can see that actually universities do not pay taxes; they get subsidized by government, and this is for a reason. Uh, the reason is that uh, mm, people long time ago decided that when your society uh, is smart and well educated it works better there is less war less poverty people are more happy they are more open and uh, and generally when you go to university you should remember that it's going to change you the person you're going to come in uh, at when you when you arrive at the beginning of first year it's not the same person that that that's gonna come out at the end of the last, and all of you can actually see that, yeah. right. like how much you learn, uh, it, and it's not about just knowledge. Of course, knowledge, uh, knowledge is uh, very important. It, it just makes you a better human being in a sense that you can make better choices. You usually become more compassionate with it. Uh, although it's uh, w one thing I can 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 say for sure, it's it's not gonna make you happier. The the more you understand how the world works, uh, the less uh, happy with the world you are. That's to put th the list. That's why they say ignorance is bliss sometimes. Exactly. Uh, however, uh, you know, once you rise to to some level, it, it you cannot go back, and uh, and generally it's gonna improve your life. In various ways you cannot even predict and uh, this is why I believe that studying is way more than just you know finding the right skills uh, for a job of course it, it's gonna help you with it plus it's like a very big test that you're doing now then you can like show off to your future employer uh, however the context and generally the personal growth you can achieve through studying uh, is something that I believe is far more uh, precious exactly just the, skills exactly the pay ability to pay attention network with people communication skills so all these th type of things you learn in university it's not like you will go home just watch some TV shows and it's gonna come automatically to you until you meet uh, students in an international environment that's where you can hone your skills and uh, that what his point was so thank you thank you for answering this question so I like this interview yeah. do you like this interview I love it 
Do you have any regrets that you came here? Uh, we should have two awards for this this person <laughs> from the. Uh, we will. Uh, marketing department. Uh, hi. We need one more present. <laughs> but uh, anyways, we will. Um, give the present to Mr. Dmitro Kachenko, a student from the management faculty, which is my student and your student too. And uh, yeah, you know, you have some uh, spare hobbies, right? Some spare interests. Uh, anything else you want to ask? Um, Say how we admire this wonderful person. Uh, uh, okay. I, I, just a little. Just a just little. little. Okay, okay. No. I'll keep it. I'll keep it mo uh, modest. Okay. All right. So I really appreciate uh, his ability to become a teacher in the class and a friend outside of the class because usually when the classes are over we go downstairs we have a little chat and like it he never makes me feel like he is in such an authoritative place to because usually people are intimidated intimidated by okay he's a mathematics teacher and when somebody says maths and like you have this perspective he's gonna be a boring guy he's gonna be so authoritative he can say sell me but it's not like that and and i like the way he makes me feel her feel and all, all the students like around him if you if you just wish him a good morning you're gonna get an amazing response just believe me so make sure next time you see him give him a rose or something <laughs> valentine's day is coming so yeah just take the opportunity to, just do it yeah and yeah. uh as we, like me and Dipancho say, thank you Lazarsky University uh, for having our back and for having our doctor back too. Yeah. In two different meanings. Uh, wrong camera again. <laughs> I think we're going to finish with this. Yeah. We have Should the winner up. of the, um, the best question contest. Uh, thank you very much for participating. And we actually had a lot of interesting questions, I suppose. It was a very... Do you want to say something to students? Uh, to good luck you on like. your exam tomorrow. <laughs> you have an exam with him tomorrow. Cool. Uh, well, we'll try to give him in a good mood. Uh, even it's not up to yeah, me. Yeah, even it's considering it, all the computer is checking it. Ah, okay. This time. So the computer is checking. Don't have any influence. So, thank you very much for being with us, Dipancho. Thank you very much for being with me today. You're thank a wonderful you co-host, <laughs> and I think you're the best co-host for interviewing our wonderful guest tonight. Thank you very much for being with us. We do hope that you didn't regret coming to our no. wonderful talk it was, show. It was really fun. That's great. So, guys, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks on Lazarski Talks' ninth episode. Good luck with your exams. Have a wonderful, whatever you have, night. And uh, have fun. And thank you very much. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. <laughs>